David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review and a giveaway. Today I have for you the latest release from Enso, and that would be the Pioma Pocket Ultim. A little over a month ago, I reviewed one of their previous releases, which was the Piuma Primary Manipulation. Um, I very much enjoyed that model, uh, and it did sell out on their site. Uh, and let's see if I care for this new model as well. Uh, thanks go out to the good folks at Enso for providing the pen you will see today for review. And as I mentioned up top, I will be giving one away to one of you, so stay tuned to the end of this video to learn how you can enter for the chance to make one of these pens your very own. The pen arrives in this rather simple box. It does have the Enso branding on the front. There's nothing extravagant about this packaging, which is perfectly fine. Uh, inside, actually, let me get that here, is the pen. It comes in a little plastic pouch with a standard international cartridge. And then we have the pen. Uh, this is the Enso Piuma Pocket Ultim. Uh, this is a limited edition of 150 units. Uh, the name Piuma is an Italian word meaning feather. Um, it's used here to pay homage to the very first fountain pens which were made from feathers. Um, I reviewed a few pens made from this material previously. Uh, there was one from Kasama, there was a couple from Shown Design. Uh, Gravitas has an Ultim model as well, but I haven't reviewed that one yet. Uh, Ultim is an engineered plastic uh, known as polyether imid. Uh, it's commonly used in structural applications. Uh, it offers a really high strength. Um, it's stronger than acrylic and other resins, and it's uh, chemically and temperature resistant as well. It has a distinct transparent amber color and is easy to manipulate into things like aerospace components or medical devices or fountain pens. Uh, the exterior on this pen is not completely smooth. Uh, there are very small tooling grooves across the entire pen. Um, it adds a minute amount of texture to this pen, but it also helps you maintain your grip on this small device. Um, overall, this pen has a bit of a bullet shape to it. Um, let's take a look at the top of the cap. Uh, it is rounded. Now, I have two different versions of this pen with me, one with a polished stainless steel nib and one with a black lacquered stainless steel nib. Um, I like how on this version with a black nib, you can make out the outline of the nib through the translucent material. Um, you can see the polished nib in the same manner, but I just think that the view of the black one looks a bit more mysterious. Um, this pocket pen is clipless and angles up slightly before it straightens out. Uh, there is no exterior branding on this pen. Um, I don't believe there's any on the pen at all. Uh, while I would typically mention how I care for my pens to be branded in some form, with this material being used, uh, I can forgive this minor pen crime. Uh, the material really doesn't lend itself to engraving, especially with the grooved finish on here. The transition from cap to barrel is fairly smooth. There's a small V-shaped groove. And then we have the barrel. Uh, you know, I hesitate to even call it a barrel. It's only about an inch and a quarter in length. It is straight. And then at the end, there is a medium sized step down to the posting threads. And then the end of the barrel is rounded. Um, typically, twist to post mechanisms aren't my favorite. I'm just not fond of the look when they're not being used. They tend to just look a little bit odd and out of place in my opinion. But I feel the way this pen is designed does a good job of kind of hiding the threads in plain sight. You know, I barely even notice that they're there. The cap twists off in just over a single rotation. And underneath we have a number six box stainless steel nib. Now this is the black lacquered version, which is available in fine, medium, and broad. Then we have a polished stainless steel version, which is available in fine or medium. Uh, at an additional cost, there is also an option to equip this pen with a fine titanium nib as well. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section begins with a rounded flare, then angles up until you reach the cap threads and a medium sized step up to the barrel. Um, I don't find this section to be slippery at all, and the subtle grooves I showed earlier really help you maintain your grip. Now, if I'm just jotting a quick note, then I'll tend to not post this pen and kind of nestle the end of the barrel into my palm. If you're writing anything longer than a quick note, then this is not the most comfortable writing position. This pen essentially was designed to be used posted. 
But the cap does post easily. Um, I think the design element of having the end of the barrel rounded really helps bring the cap into a better posting alignment so you're not having to fidget around finding the right position to post the pen. Uh, when it is posted, this pen is the length of most other standard pens. Uh, and the transition between the cap and barrel is fairly smooth, so there isn't a sharp ridge that bites into the side of your palm. Uh, this is a pen designed to either be used with a standard international short cartridge or eyedropper. Now, there's a couple of nice design features in regard to eyedropping. Uh, first of all, there is an O-ring at the base of this section. Uh, and I also find the threads which affix the section to the barrel are longer than normal. So between both of those elements, uh, the risk of this pen leaking is reduced significantly. Um, I would still apply a small amount of silicone grease on the threads for a third layer of ink protection. Um, during the writing sample, I'll show you how to eyedropper this pen and what it looks like with the uh, ink sloshing around the barrel. Uh, the Enso Piuma Pocket Ultim is available only through the Enso website. I'll put a link in the notes below to where you can find it. It retails for $95, which I feel is a reasonable price for this unique pen. Uh, Enso pens are fairly reasonably priced in general. Um, as I mentioned previously, this is a limited edition of 150 units, and the Enso limited editions tend to sell out. So if you're interested in this pen, I would take action sooner rather than later before they are all spoken for. Okay, in regard to the giveaway, um, I will be giving away the model with the polished nib. Uh, in order to enter to win, you must be a subscriber to this channel. If not, please hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it. Uh, in the notes below, there is a link to a Google form where you will enter your name, email address, as well as answering an optional question. Uh, you know, I am currently working on my next pen project. It's something I am very excited about, and I hope to be able to share details with you sometime here within the next month or so. Uh, there are several manufacturers I'd love to partner with on a project, but why don't you uh, let me know a collaboration that you would like to see. Uh, 72 hours after the posting of this video, I will randomly select a winner and contact you via the email address you provide. Uh, please be aware of nefarious folks who might attempt to contact you via YouTube comment trying to trick you into thinking you've won. I still see a great deal of this scam activity when running giveaways, so please use common sense. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. So here we have some size comparisons for the Enso Piuma Pocket Ultim. Um, I had showed you the one with the black nib previously, and then this is the one with the polished stainless steel nib. I think they both look sharp in comparison to the, uh, the golden color of this material. Now, let's do the size comparisons first. So, We'll just do one of these. In regard to a couple of other Enso pens, uh, this is what the Pocket Puma looks like in metal. Uh, this, uh, they have a, a few different versions of this in metal as well as resin. Uh, and then this is the Enso Italia. Maybe I need to scoot these over so they're a little bit even. So this is the Italia. Uh, and then finally, this is the Puma in the Primary Manipulation 4, which is something that I recently reviewed. In regard to some non-Enso pens, here it is with a Pilot Prera. And a couple of Quebecos, here it is with a Quebeco Lilliput. And then here it is with a Quebeco Sport. In regard to uncapped, which, you know, I really think I should look at it when it is posted, since that's how you're going to be using it. Uh, this is what it looks like in comparison to the Prera and the Caveco Sport, and then finally the Caveco Lilliput. Okay, let's see if we can eyedropper this pen without me making too much of a mess. Um, the ink that I'm going to use is Three Oysters Chili Red, and let's go ahead and open that up, and then we are going to open this up here. 
and we're just going to use this blunt syringe. You can actually use eyedroppers as well. Let's get a little bit more in there. And then we'll go ahead and fill this up. And that's a decent ink capacity in there. Now, when I'm doing this, I try to avoid getting ink on the actual threads themselves. And I just messed up there. I guess I wasn't quite as careful as I was inserting it. It's kind of like a game of operation. So let's go ahead and cap this up and then let's go ahead and seal this up and then you know what it's not going to write right away i'm going to wait just a second uh, to do the writing sample so that the uh, the ink flows and has some time to make its way down to the nib here Now the ink started flowing quicker than I anticipated on this. You know, it was literally 15 or 20 seconds. A lot of times if you put a cartridge in a brand new pen, it might take a while for the ink to make its way down, but this happened rather quickly, so that's impressive. So what we have here is the Enso Piuma Pocket Ultum. And this is, I believe, a medium stainless steel nib. And the ink, as you are aware, is three oysters, chili red. This is what the ink looks like. It's a nice vibrant red. Uh, this is what it is or what it looks like with diamine poppy red, which I think pops just a little bit more. Uh, and then with a little bit of a darker red, here's the Stilo and Stile Roman Centurion red. And I, I do care for all three of these reds. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I will say that this Bach nib does have a fair amount of feedback to it. I'd say it's more on the feedbacky side as opposed to the smooth side. You're not going to get a lot of line variation out of here. Um, the ink flow on this medium nib, I'd say, is on the lower side uh, in regard to reverse writing. It's not very sharp and it does lay down an extra, extra fine line. And in regard to some fast writing. The feed keeps up just fine. So there we have the Inso Piuma Pocket Ultum. Uh, I think this is an interesting pocket pen uh, and also one that holds a, a decent amount of ink here. And uh, it does look neat with the ink sloshing around in here. So don't forget to uh, follow the Google form in the notes below in order to enter to win your very own one of these. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.